My name is Elliot Greenblatt, but many people call me Mr. Scammer because for the past three years I've served as AARP Vermont's coordinator for Fraud Watch. <laughs> Title theft. This is a topic that most people have not heard about, but it's something that those of us who monitor fraud and scams are seeing a lot of across the country. So what is title theft? What happens? How does it take place? What can you do to protect yourself? Also to recognize that your title's been stolen. Title theft is one way that con artists use stolen identities through identity theft in order to make their profit. In title theft, something happens where an individual is able to contact a bank, a mortgage company, and do one of three things. First thing they can do, or possibly do, is refinance your mortgage. In other words, take out your mortgage for an amount higher than what it currently is. Uh, it may be at that amount, or it might even be at the same exact amount, but through the uh, mortgage provider, get a lower interest rate. Why would they be interested in you getting a lower interest rate? They're not. What they're interested in is transferring the loan provider to somebody who they can then obtain money from. And as a result, you become the loser. Second approach is title transfer. Simply doing the paperwork, and sometimes this is through a home equity, and being able to transfer the title of your property to them. Again, they've already stolen your identity. They've taken the information that you have, and now what they're going to do is commit the scam. So three-step process. First, the data breach. Secondly, the identity theft. And now, the act of transferring the title. The third thing that they could possibly do is sell your property. Now, again, people would wonder, how can they sell my property if they don't actually own it? By doing the fraud that we've described, they can end up taking possession of your land, of your home, selling it, and you not realizing it until the person who unwittingly bought the stolen property shows up to take possession. So let's take a, a little look at what happens in terms of these three things. Uh, by the way, it, it may seem kind of ironic, but um, a person is more susceptible to this type of fraud if they have clear title to their home. In other words, they don't have a mortgage. And the reason why is there are fewer hurdles for the con artist to try to leap over. This means that the uh, con artist, for instance, doesn't have to go through the existing mortgage on the home. They can simply take out a fresh mortgage. They've got the information that they need. Uh, all they have to do is work with it. So there's more of a possibility, or at least more susceptibility, when there is no mortgage or any liens on the property. So what can you do to protect yourself from this kind of scam? Uh, there are a few very critical things that you can do. Uh, one thing is be very protective of personal information, personally identifiable information like a social security number, driver's license number, uh, account information number. All of these things can be combined by the con artist in order to commit the theft. So by being uh, very close and protective with that information, you protect yourself from this kind of scam. Don't share any of your personal information on social media. It's critical that you stay away from social media with it. Um, and that you not provide this kind of information to anyone over the telephone or on the internet, uh, through emails, stay away from it. Use uh, common sense, I guess, when you're dealing with uh, your information. And that's your first step in self-protection. The second step in self-protection is obtain a credit freeze. It's virtually impossible for somebody to open a new credit account uh, to take out a mortgage take out a credit card without having a credit 
check done. The uh, four credit bureaus, Equifax, Experian, Innovus, and TransUnion, all offer credit freezes. The credit freeze means that nobody can end up getting a copy of your credit report. And so a uh, con artist going to a bank, trying to open an account in your name, uh, the first thing the bank would do is go to the credit bureau to get a report on your credit worthiness. If they can't get that report, no uh, account can be open. There may be a small fee involved for a credit freeze. When I took out my credit freezes, basically the fee was about $5. I look at it as uh, very inexpensive insurance. There also is a possibility that at some point you need to have your credit freeze lifted so that you can make a purchase where a credit uh, check is necessary or maybe uh, take out a lease on a vehicle or purchase property. In those cases, you can lift the credit freeze, again, for a small fee. It can be for a specific purpose for a short period of time and then have it reimposed. Another safe step to take is something called title insurance. And those of us who are homeowners or property owners have probably dealt with title insurance. Uh, this is insurance taken out usually at the purchase of property, and it's done primarily to protect the lender. The um, amount of insurance covers often the, um, only the amount of money that is borrowed. So, for instance, if you have a uh, piece of property in which you've paid off the mortgage, you may no longer have title insurance that's applicable. What we recommend is that you get title insurance and have it for the full value of the property, not just for the property of a loan or mortgage. Uh, once you have that, uh, it does provide some protection, and in the uh, absence of other protection, it can be quite valuable. Other steps you can take. These are the common steps that we recommend to everybody constantly. First one is monitor your accounts. Make sure that the bills that you're getting are the bills that you expect. In the case of a mortgage, if you get a regular mortgage statement from your bank and suddenly that mortgage statement doesn't come to you, that should be a clue that there's something wrong. Contact the bank or the lender who provided the mortgage. Uh, another item that you should do is really monitor the status of your mortgage or your loans to be sure that everything is being handled correctly. Uh, another step that we think is pretty important is to be looking out for any um, notices of abnormality with your property. In other words, that there may have been uh, an unwarranted check on the property, uh, insurance taken out on the property. These are all signs that there is a difficulty or possibility of some fraud taking place. If you are a victim of this type of um, title or property fraud, there are some steps that we recommend. The first step is that you need to collect all relevant information. For example, the names of any individuals who are involved, the uh, dates that you have for any notifications you received or any actions that took place. Uh, if there are any contacts, the contacts, uh, phone numbers. If there are accounts involved, the account numbers. One of the things that we've seen happen in some parts of the country is people don't realize that there's a problem until somebody shows up at their home with a moving van and is ready to move into their house. And they have a legitimate bill of sale for the house to them. What you then have to do is prove that you no longer own the house. As far as the law is concerned, that other person may actually own your house and now you have to disprove that. It may not take, uh, it may actually take some time to do that. So being vigilant becomes essential. Uh, watch things like the credit bureau reports. If you don't have a freeze, get copies of your credit bureau reports and see if there have been any uh, unsolicited uh, checks of your credit. Now this may happen just to, as a point of routine, but if you start to see banks checking into your credit reports, 
that might be an indication that something's happening off the radar screen. If you are a victim, again, file a report with the Federal Trade Commission. This involves identity theft. Federal Trade Commission is the government agency that addresses identity theft. They will take action. They will also uh, be able to provide you with some assistance in terms of what to do next. File a police report. Quite often people ignore local law enforcement authorities. This gives a little more legitimacy to your claim and it's also something that the Federal Trade Commission would like to see when they begin to pursue the issue. If you don't file a, a criminal report with law enforcement, there may be a sense that you're not taking this very seriously or you're not very concerned. And the final important step is to develop a recovery plan. Again, with the Federal Trade Commission, there are suggestions for a recovery plan. There is a step-by-step -step guide that you can use that will teach you how to make full recovery from title theft or any other identity theft. So that, in summary, is title theft. We don't, as I said, we don't see a lot of this in Vermont at this point, but quite often when we see these types of fraud showing up in other parts of the country, it's just a matter of time before they appear here. So the important things to do are to be, be, be diligent in terms of how you protect your identity, be vigilant in terms of what your paperwork is showing and what your financial reports show, and you're going a long way in terms of protecting yourself. We have some scam alerts which are very current and items that we want to notify the public on. Uh, there are four of them and the first one is one that has just come out of the Federal Trade Commission, the FTC. It is uh, identifying a scam that's being uh, conducted on the, in the name of the Federal Trade Commission where individuals receive uh, emails and then are directed to a website and ask for access to a person's computer. And this is in order to uh, deal with something called a tech support uh, scam or tech support involvement. The FTC warns that nobody from their agency or organization is making this contact and that it is a scam if you receive any uh, notification of a computer problem or computer glitch or the opportunity to get payment under the advanced tech support refund program, ignore it. The program has actually concluded. The FTC is not uh, pursuing it any further and the con artists are actually gaining access to people's computers through it. In a similar type of scam that we have uh, an alert on. Uh, there have been a number of notifications by state government about unclaimed funds. 
that you need to contact the state for uh, access to money that they may have that is in their hands that is deserved by you. Many of these uh, attempts also include the opportunity by the agency to access your computer. Again, ignore it. It is a scam and a state government would like to be notified if you receive that kind of a call. Here's another scam that we just have an alert from. This one, uh, the alert comes from the Better Business Bureau and scammers are using LinkedIn a social media connection in order to get people to apply for phony loans. Uh, the basis of the scam is that you're going to get a, uh, an opportunity to take out a loan and all you need to do is pay a small processing fee and to pay it by either wire transfer or to utilize gift cards and purchase the gift cards at a local pharmacy or store. Uh, this again is a scam. We find that uh, con artists like using money orders or gift card transfers because these are untraceable. So if you get this kind of request, there are some steps to take. The first thing to do uh, is it's possible somebody has broken into your account with LinkedIn. Uh, you need to change your privacy settings, change your password. Uh, don't accept any requests to be a friend or be in your LinkedIn network unless you know the person who's making the request. Uh, this seems to be a, an approach that many of the con artists are using. And then thirdly, uh, if you need to take out a loan, take out the loan from a known and reputable organization or financial institution. Going to these off-market sources quite often leads to being uh, a victim of a scam. The uh, next scam, this one uh, was released actually on May 16th by the Federal Trade Commission and it is a scam called the secret shopping scam. And what's happening is con artists are mailing out fake checks to people and in with the fake check is a job offer to be a secret shopper. It asks you to go to a Walmart quite often it's a Walmart, but it might be a Walgreens or other store, and to purchase gift cards as a secret shopper. Then to uh, take those gift cards, contact the con artist, they give you a phone number in the letter that you receive, and to uh, give them the numbers off those gift cards. Once that happens, they have the money if you take the check that they send you and you try to cash it, you probably will, but the check will end up bouncing and you end up losing the money that you've uh, spent on those gift cards and that you've transferred over to somebody else. So the, the message here from the Federal Trade Commission is if you receive something like this, contact the Federal Trade Commission, uh, don't fall for the scam, and uh, be safe. And the final uh, alert that we have today, and this also came to us uh, in the past two weeks, is a new scam called shimming. Uh, you may have heard of skimming, in which uh, a con artist places a device on an ATM machine, or it could be inside a gasoline pump, and then steals credit card information. This new attempt is something called shimming, and in the... Uh, work of the con artist, they take a paper thin, micro thin insert, place it in the card slot of a point of sale computer entry. This would be uh, the cashier's desk at uh, a grocery store, could be a department store, pharmacy, convenience store. And that small, very thin shim, which is why it's called shimming, then picks up the uh, information from the chip on your credit card. So you con artists understand that the magnetic strip cards are going the way of the dinosaur and as a result their uh, card readers will not give them any benefit. But these uh, chip readers will. So what they will do is put the shim in the device, 
it will read your card and transfer the information to them. So what we recommend are three things, and this comes out of the Better Business Bureau, that you keep a close eye on bank and credit card statements because you never know when this type of uh, scam will take place. And keep in mind that if you have online banking and you have credit cards, you can get your statements or at least your account information without waiting until the end of month statement. You can check these things online constantly. Be wary if your credit card gets stuck in a device. So if the card reader kind of grabs onto your card, that may be an indication that there's something stuck in that card reader that could be reading your card. And then thirdly, uh, a recommendation is to use car contactless payment systems. So this would be something like Apple Pay or Google Pay. It might even be a wave pay system such as what uh, Visa uses in a radio chip in embedded in the card. So shimming a brand new uh, scam that could impact everybody. Veterans. We all appreciate veterans, or at least most of us do. They sacrificed for us and for our safety and our protection. But there's a small number of people in this country who do not have that appreciation, and they tend to be the con artists. Con artists are targeting veterans at an alarming rate, and they're actually being very successful at it. Colonel Jones, this is the Department of Veterans Affairs calling to update your social security number. Mrs. Sanchez, hello. I'm calling about offering cash payments for your VA Veterans benefits. like you are now eligible for some amazing real hello, estate opportunities. Uh, I'm a financial advisor and would like to take a moment to review your I work for a military charity and we are seeking donations from veterans just like the you. VA calling. We'd like to verify your information on file. The veteran scams have increased over the past couple years and some of those scams are very successful to the point that they uh, exceed the level of success that con artists have with other groups in the population. For example, the percentage of veterans who are successfully scammed is about double the number of general population senior citizens who are scammed. So let's take a look at some of the specifics that we're finding out about scams targeting veterans. Now, veterans have some benefits that are provided as a result of their service. Veterans also have an affinity for each other, kind of a brotherhood of those who have given service to our country. These are things that con artists are targeting. Benefits. Many veterans around the country are being offered the opportunity to get money now for benefits that they will be receiving later. And it could be, for example, disability benefits. It could be pension payments. What happens in this case is the veteran is offered an amount of money that is certainly less than what the total benefit would be, but they're offered the money today, and in exchange, they sign off the benefits that they are entitled to. A second scam that we're seeing, and in this case we're seeing in Vermont in particular, is a scam where the con artist creates a fake charity. The fake charity is to benefit veterans and provide them with services or provide them with products that they can't uh, obtain through the Veterans Administration or other means. So it may be, for instance, a higher degree of care in terms of medical care. It may be particular items related to, let's say, their uh, ability to get a mortgage or education under the VA plan. Con artists create a charity and try to convince veterans to donate to that charity, which is completely fake. A third area that we see fraud taking place that's pointed at veterans is in fraudulent records offers. The scam 
turns out to offer veterans the opportunity to get records that the government is holding for them and all the uh, veteran needs to do is pay a small fee in order to get those records. The reality is that the Department of Veterans Affairs provides all of this information free to the veteran. But sometimes the way the scam is phrased, it looks like something else is being provided. So veterans end up taking on the opportunity but not realizing that they are actually the target of a scam. Another uh, scam that we see happening is a phishing expedition. In other words, the attempt to gain personally identifiable information from veterans. This happens online. The scam usually displays things like the American flag, talks about veterans, and talks about opportunities that veterans can have, and asks veterans to submit certain information, which may include service numbers, may include social security numbers, and other personally identifiable information. That information is then used to create identity theft. A fifth area that we see happening uh, a great deal is bogus employment scams. A number of younger veterans end up receiving uh, opportunities that are phrased online as a great opportunity for veterans, and there is no opportunity. But what happens is the veteran ends up either paying a fee for a job that doesn't exist or providing personal information in the form of uh, a biography or job application for something that they won't get. That information is then either used or sold for identity theft. So there are five scams that are being specific to targeting our veterans today. If you are a veteran and you feel that you've been either a victim or approached, we ask you to contact your Veterans Affairs Administration offices. They will know what to do with this particular problem. They will be able to help you out if you've been scammed, and they'll be able to pass the word to other veterans on what to be on guard for.